So which of you fine gentlemen would like to join our team? Oh, there's only one spot open right now, so we're gonna have tryouts. One small thing. Yeah. When you bring me out, can you introduce me as Joker? Joaquin Phoenix's highly anticipated performance of the Joker has finally been released onto the world, and the reviews are actually a bit of a mixed bag. Now, despite some citing the film as sluggish and drawn out, while no one has anything bad to say about the cinematography or Joaquin Phoenix's phenomenal performance as the twisted clown. <gasps> <clears throat> Can you please stop bothering my kid? Sorry. He gave us new insight into the origin story of one of entertainment's most popular villains, allowing us to finally look at the driving forces that turned a failed stand-up comic, Arthur Fleck, into Batman's most twisted and menacing foes. Now, it's safe to say that he'll be nominated for a Golden Globe and an Oscar, but he doesn't have these on his mantle just yet. Whereas we do know that Heath Ledger's Joker, well, it blew the pants off of practically everyone and his portrayal will have set the bar for the type of character development and performances that we could be seeing in film. Now, for his hard work, he took home top honors, or at least his family did after his untimely passing. This award tonight would have humbly validated Heath's quiet determination to be truly accepted by you all here, his peers, within an industry he so loved. Thank you. Now, Heath Ledger's death, it only made the lore surrounding the Joker even deeper, which made the shoes Walking Phoenix stepped into, well, all the bigger. No pun intended. Okay, maybe. Just a little intended. Now, I'm a big movie buff and a comic book fan, particularly for DC villains. So in this video, I just, well, I went and saw the movie last night and I just, I wanted to do this. So, here we go. What's going on guys, it's your boy Michael McCrudden back at it with another Versus video. Now the last time we hit you guys with one of these, it was on another pair of clowns. I'm talking about Trippy Red and Kid Boo. Now any dude who actually goes and gets a little, you know, face tattoo forever? Well, that's kind of clownish in my eyes, I'm just saying. Now in that video, 84% of you guys voted for Trippy Red. But I got a feeling this one, it's gonna be a little tighter. Now you guys have your say in a poll we run in the final round. Also, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say in the comments down below. This is something I'm pretty, I'm pretty uh, passionate about making. I got a lot to say, so I'm interested in your feedback down below. Also, uh, let us know who you want to see in the future verses. Now let's get into this video. Also, I need to announce that this video has spoilers, but you've already clicked on it. You should have known better. All right, here we go. Round one, fight. Now for the first round, we're gonna talk about both films and their overall performances, the two actors. Now for those of you who might think I know nothing on the matter, well, once upon a time, I myself was actually an actor. Hi, my name is Michael McCrudden. I'm with KG Talent, and I'll be reading for David. Now the Joker film is an exploration of what causes a lonely, unhinged man to explode. Now it has moments that are riveting, it's weird, it's an eerie performance. And uh, well, this Joker, he's demented. He's also strangely gentle. And that laugh, well, that laugh gives him points alone. Now it's something that Joaquin, he actually obsessed over prior to filming. And he just kept meeting up with director Todd Phillips, ensuring that he got it just right. <laughs> We watch as Arthur Fleck, he transitions from sad loner to murderous madman step by step. Now he has a disorder that causes him to laugh hysterically without feeling happy. Now uh, there were delusional fantasies of him being a successful stand-up comedian. There was also some romantic relationship, but it was all in his head. We found out that he was abused as a child and his reaction, it was uncontrollable laughter. He danced, he killed, and we understood how he felt justified in his heinous actions because he had lived life as an outcast and the whole world just continued to shit on him. The Arthur Fleck in this movie, he's got a long way to go before he becomes the criminal kingpin and the most feared villain in Gotham. You know what I mean? He's, he's, he just still seems childlike. But it was hard to take your eyes off of Joaquin's performance. But I still have to question, was it better than Heath's? I mean, that portrayal is one for the record books. So I decided to dig up some old reviews of Heath's work. After people had just seen the movie, this is what they had to say. Now the Times read, Ledger is so terrifying and unpredictable that his very presence on screen makes you horribly nervous. The Hollywood Reporter wrote, Ledger's performance is a beauty, his Joker has a slow cadence of speech, 
as if weighing words for maximum mischief and contempt. He moves languidly as if to savor his dark deeds, his head and body jerking at times from an overload of brain impulses. The Daily Telegraph reported Ledger's deranged demonic lord of chaos is a genuinely unsettling, brilliant, nuanced portrait of evil. Now I for one, I don't take everything critics say as facts. I mean, they do have to sell papers, they gotta get them views, and to do that, well, they're often nitpicky about absolutely everything. Now, Joaquin's portrayal, it seems to be suffering from a bit of this at the time of this recording. But from what I can tell here, there were few who had anything but high praise to say about Heath Ledger's performance. The Dark Knight, it really set the bar. Even people as they walked out of the movie theaters, just the whole world was blown away by his work, by that film. Really well directed, really well executed. Um, the casting was great, and I thought that Heath Ledger did a masterful job. It was cool. It was good. It was a lot of action. The Joker was funny. He, he, did, he lived it up. He was definitely did, yeah. That's right. He was living it up. Now, not to take anything from Heath Ledger, but he was in a supporting role next to Batman. And he was also in full swing as the Joker, the agent of chaos. Now, this means he had a lot to work with. I mean, he was wiring up boats with explosives. He was squaring off against the bat. He would rob a bank, he'd blow up a hospital, he was putting bombs in people's stomachs. The character was already established and we got to watch him at the height of his anarchy. Still, every line delivered by Heath Ledger, it seemed to become a cinematic classic. Now this is about as tough of a comparison as there is to make. Now I myself, I'm a die-hard Heath Ledger fan, but it seems there's something extra difficult about following in Heath Ledger's footsteps. Now giving us something totally different that isn't a letdown, well, that's pretty tough to do. And I think Joaquin, well, he carried an entire movie on his frail vegan shoulders. Now, despite which movie I prefer, I'm still giving Joaquin the win for overall performance. Also, hit that like button if you like that frail vegan shoulder reference. It's true. Lost a lot of weight. Round two, fight. All right, moving on to the second round, we're gonna talk about the costumes and the makeup. Now we know everyone, they're gonna skip over Jared Leto's emo option costume and they're gonna have to pick between Joaquin's classic approach or Heath Ledger's, well, you know, kiss meets drug addict, <laughs> the cool one. But there was something about that Suicide Squad dude, he just seemed too cool for school. They really missed the mark with that one. Who's a fan of that? Oh, I don't wanna kill you. I just wanna hurt you. Really, really bad. Interestingly enough, neither Heath or Joaquin's character stem from the comic book origin story where the Joker fell into a vat of chemicals. This clip right here is basically my childhood. Made me afraid to go to the bath. Instead, what we got is two men in makeup and traditional clown attire. Now, the costume designer behind Heath Ledger's Joker, Lindy Hemmings, well, she actually had this to say. You can imagine Vivian Westwood meets Johnny Rotten, Sid Vicious, Pete Doherty. You think of all those people who dress themselves up and are very interested in their appearances, and then we added into it the life of him. So whatever it is that's wrong with him and made him be like this, well, it means he doesn't care about himself at all. Really. He's very sweaty and he probably doesn't have a proper home. We were trying to make him sort of, uh, I don't want to say vagrant, but a backstory for him that he really doesn't look after himself. Now the prosthetic supervisor, Connor O'Sullivan, he stated, Once I had in my mind that it was going to be scars rather than a fixed smile, I immediately thought of the punk and skinhead era and some unsavory characters. Now the look he wound up with, it's known as a Glasgow or a Chelsea smile. Now, actor Flanagan Tommy, you know him from Sons of Anarchy, well, that guy got mugged outside of a nightclub and he was left with these facial scars, like, for real. Yikes. Now, as for the makeup, well, Heath, he apparently played some part in its final design and it was also based on some inspiration by painter Francis Bacon. Now, what we got was a depiction of a character unlike one has ever seen before in the film or in comics. I mean, it's gritty, it's real, it's sweaty, it's menacing, and it's just something that's really hard to beat. I wanted to see what you'd do. And you didn't disappoint. You let five people die. Then you let Dent take your place. Even to a guy like me, that's cold. The Joaquin Phoenix, his film is set in the early 1980s and for a film about Gotham, well, it's very much set in the real world. 
Now he's rocking a rust colored waistcoat, a mustard toned vest, and a pattern bottled green shirt. The costume designer Mark Bridges, what they were going for were clothes that were appropriate for the time. Everything from the cut to the color palette. And director Todd Phillips, he actually had some ideas right out of the gate. He wanted him to be very clean, very classic, and very clown. Now his hair, it was inspired by the color of broccoli. Definitely no, uh, no Jared Leto puke green here. And no doubt you'll be seeing a version of this out for Halloween 2019. But I don't think it pushed anyone's imagination quite like the Dark Knight did. So for this round, I gotta give the win to Heath. Round three, fight! All right, wrapping things up with a third round, let's talk about how these films will go down in history. Now at the time of this recording, Joker is number one at the box office, it earned 96 million domestically and just under $250 million globally, which is the biggest October debut of all time. Now with a reported budget of $55 million, well it made the boys at Warner Bros in DC very happy campers. But the film, it still has a long way to go to catch up to The Dark Knight, which has surpassed $1 billion. It's also become the fourth film to ever do so. It's actually the top earner of any Batman movie ever released. And with a budget of nearly $200 million, well, I'm sure they're happy with their investment. Now it's actually the 43rd highest grossing film of all time. But of course, there's more to history than just the money. Now, of course, as we mentioned, Heath Ledger, he won a posthumous Oscar for a supporting role. I'm sorry if I butchered that word. Now this film, it was snubbed for the best picture and best director, likely in part because, you know, it's a comic book film. Whereas Joker, well, it'll probably be considered. I mean, there's very little about this film that is comic book-esque at all, with the exception of the working material. Though of course, the accidental death of Heath Ledger, it only added to the intrigue, the press, the fanfare, and the legacy of this film. But there has been plenty of attention surrounding Joaquin Phoenix's work. Now his friendship with Heath Ledger, it made news headlines, as did his reported investment in the character. Everything from his weight loss to his uh, his obsession on set, him staying on character, having some freakouts. Now I really do hope this man gets his Oscar because there are already super cuts that exist online of his three previous losses. And each time, well, his mood it changes just a little bit. Benicio Del Toro in traffic. Philip Seymour Hoffman in Capote. And the Oscar goes to Daniel Day-Lewis. Yeah, every time he gets increasingly upset, he might actually turn into the Joker if he loses again. You know what I mean? Now, as we do here, we need you guys to let us know who you think deserves the win in the comments down below. There is also a poll above my head. My name, of course, is Michael McCrudden, and if you're new to this channel, be sure to hit subscribe. Let me know who you'd like to see next here on this channel. We do Before They're Famous, we do Where Are They Now, we do Versus, and once upon a time, we did a show called Before They Were Gone. Now, we've changed the title of that to Gone But Not Forgotten, but we still do make those videos every once in a while. I could make an updated one on Heath Ledger, but you gotta let me know if that's something you wanna see in the comments down below, or you can find me on Instagram or Twitter at McCruddenM. I'll see you guys in another video. Boom!